Haruzu billahi min shaitani rajim Bismillah rahman rahim All praise and glory is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Lord of the universe and may his peace and blessing be the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Alhamdulillah this is the 15th meeting now and today we're going to be going over a very heavy topic just like the day of judgment this is a very heavy topic and this is a reality that no one can deny whether you are an atheist you are a christian you are a jew you're a hindu you cannot deny this reality and this is the reality of death every single soul that is born every single human being that is born has to die one day we all know this and from our previous lectures we find out what the reality of our lives is and what the purpose is and now we're going to talk about the actual process of death when we actually die what happens and based on the type of people that we were what happens based on that in scientific terms we know death as being uh, the stoppage of all uh, like ne neurons like moving in your brain your cells dying uh, your body decomposing uh, your lungs stopping they're not moving they're not uh, pumping air anymore your heart stopping but from the Islamic perspective true death happens when your soul separates your body. And what is the soul? In terms of the soul, we have very little knowledge of what exactly it is, what exactly the substance of the soul is. But when we look at all cultures throughout human history, no matter what, it's only in modern times that atheists don't believe in this, but look at any religion, they, they have a concept of the soul, something that is within us. So this separation of the soul from the body is when death actually happens. First of all, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the soul, He created Adam, Adam's soul first, the first human being. Then when Adam was sent to the earth, from his backbone, from his back, the soul was extracted. And billions and billions and billions of souls were extracted. Every human being that will ever be born, his soul already exists. So before we were even born, our souls already existed. And when we are in our mother's womb and a certain time passes, so like 120 days or something like this, uh, then an angel is sent and the soul is put into the body. This is the first time the soul and the body meets. And this is where the beginning of your birth happens. When you're born, you spend your life, whether you're a good person or a bad person, then at the end of, end of your life, now is the time of death and the angels of death are sent. Now, there's one, most scholars say there's one head angel of death and under him are many different smaller angels of death and some scholars say that we all have an angel of death assigned to us every one of us so when our moment of death comes near and it is an absolute millisecond before before death now there's un no denying that death is about to come as soon as we're about to die the reality of the next life becomes very clear to us the angel of death starts to approach we see him we see him come and everything, everything, depending on the person that we are. Now, if we are a good person, everything becomes clear. And this angel of death comes in a, in a, very, in a very good way. We, we look at him as a, as a pleasant person to look at. And the Prophet ﷺ said that whenever you see a dead body, you'll often see that the eyes, the eyes are looking up. That is the last millisecond where the, eye, the body is actually looking at the soul leave the body and go to raise to the heavens. That is the last moment. And for the believer, the angel of death comes and the angel of death pulls out the soul from the body like pouring water. Now, now even this process is painful. The pains of death, the pains, what we call the sakarat of death in, in, in Arabic. Every single soul goes through the pains of death. Even our Prophet Sallallahu he went through the pains, what we call the pangs of death, the pains of death. Even he went through this. So every, almost every single one of us will have to go through this. And some scholars say that only the, the, the shaheed, only the shaheed won't go through this. Now, when the good person dies, his soul is gently taken out of his body and the angels, the angel of death and other angels. So depending on if it was a great, great person, thousands of angels will surround him. Thousands of angels will surround him and they will say, Oh, gentle soul, oh, pure soul, oh, beloved soul, come out, come. Come, come to your final resting place. Come, come to a place of peace. They'll invite him. And the soul will be scared. The soul is going to be scared. It's not going to know what's happening. But the angels are going to reassure him. It's going to be okay. What's going to happen to you? Good is going to happen to you. So they're going to take the soul, wash the soul, and clothe the soul. 
and raise it to the heavens. Raise it to the heavens. And in the heavens, in the highest of heavens, the best of souls are going to be taken to the highest of heavens. And they're going to be presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they're going to say, oh, oh, our Lord, we brought you a blessed soul. We brought you a blessed soul. And Allah is going to say, indeed, it is a blessed soul. And Allah knows best. And he will say, send the soul back. Send it back to the earth from which I created it. And it will remain there until the day of judgment. And the soul will be sent all the way back to the ground, to the grave, to meet the body again. Now it's not going to enter the body as we know it right now, but it's going to go to the place of where the body is again. This is where we, what we call the barza or the realm of the grave. Now this is the good person, the bad person, the evil person. A split second before he's about to die, he is going to see the angels with dark black faces. The, some of the most terrifying faces that he can imagine. They're going to come and his soul is going to be ripped out as if you take a metal, a metal cone and if you see a sheep's wool, it's very hard to untangle. If you put it through the sheep's wool and rip it out, that's how his soul is going to be ripped out of his body. And the angels will say, oh, you wretched, dirty, disgusting soul, come out. Come out and meet what's going to happen to you now. Meet what's going to happen to you. And your smell is of the most wretched of smells and you are the most dirtiest of souls. They're going to take out the soul and raise it to the heavens again. And the soul, nothing's going to console it. Nobody's going to console it. The angels will be cursing that soul, that wretched soul, that you, you are a disgusting human being. You are a disgusting soul. And it's going to try to attempt to the heavens and Allah's going to say, no, this, is, he is, this soul is not going to reach the heavens. It will not reach the heavens. Send this wretched soul back to the earth. Send it back and make it meet its body again from which I created it. Then the soul will be brought to the, uh, to the body. And as the funeral processions are going on, as we know, we do the janazah. When the people are about to leave now, when the people are about to leave now, this is where the squeezing happens, the squeezing of the grave. One of the best Sahabis to ever live, one of the best Muslims to ever live, Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad, who died in the battle of, of, of the trench. He gave up his life and he died and he, he made a decision in favor of, of, the, of, of reality against, against the enemies of Islam. And the Prophet ﷺ said that when his funeral procession was happening, he said 70,000 angels have come to attend his funeral. And he said that the throne of Allah shook when Sa'd ibn Mu'ad died. Now I'm telling you the level of this person. And as the body is put into the grave and the the, the, the dirt is put on top of him. The Prophet ﷺ says, SubhanAllah, Allahu Akbar. And all the people around him say that. They want to copy him. They do it again. And they ask him, Oh Rasulullah, you usually don't do this. You usually don't say SubhanAllah, Allahu Akbar as the, as the grave is being shut. Why did you do this? He said that Saad has just gone through the squeezing of the grave. And if there was any person who would have been saved, it would have been him. But even he wasn't saved. The grave, once you're put, every person, whether it's a good person or a bad person, as, you're, as the soul comes back to the grave, the ground around it will squeeze the person. And if it was a good person, it will be a, a, a light, gentle squeeze. It's going to be squeezed and then let go. But the evil, wretched person, he is going to be squeezed in such a way that his ribs mangle into each other. That's how bad he's going to be squeezed. And now, now the time for the trials of the grave comes. The trials of the grave. <clears throat> Two of Allah's creations. These are called Munkar and Nakir. They are two different angels. And these are sights that nobody wants to see. Some scholars say that Munkar and Nakir, they have such an unpleasant sight to them that they look completely unnatural. They don't look like an angel. They don't look like a man. They don't look like a jinn. They don't look like anything. These are the most unnatural creations that you can ever imagine. They will come and they will sit up the body in the grave. They will sit him up and they will ask him three questions, three different questions. The angels will ask, who is your Lord? Who is your Lord? And the believer will say, my Lord is Allah. But the non-believer will say, oh, the people used to say, oh, I don't know. I don't know. And then Allah is going to say, he is lying. This person is lying. Second question, what was your deen? What was your religion? And the believer is going to say, my deen was Islam. My, my religion was Islam. And the non-believer, he's going to say, oh, the people used to say something. I don't know. I don't know. 
And Allah is going to say, you're lying. You did know. You did know and you rejected. And the final question, who was the man sent to you? The believer is going to say, uh, the Prophet Muhammad he was sent to me. And the non-believers are going to say, I don't know. I don't know. The people used to say something. And they, he's going to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to say that he is lying. He is lying. And for, and these questions, you cannot memorize these questions. You cannot memorize these. The person who lives by Islam, who follows the Prophet Sallallahu and who knows who his Lord is in this life, when he spends his life knowing who his Lord is, he's gonna know the answers to these questions. You can spend your whole life trying to memorize these, you will never remember. The person, if he's meant to go to hell, if he's, if he's a disbeliever, if he's a wretched, wretched human being, he's not gonna remember these. He's not gonna be able to answer these questions. Now, the evil person, for him, gates of hell will be opened. Gates of hell will be opened, and morning and evening he will be shown what his final destination is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show him that this is your resting place, you're gonna go here one day, and he has no rest. The disbeliever in the grave will have no rest whatsoever, and he's gonna be seeing his final destination. And for the believer, for the believer, he will get a glimpse of what is to come in the next life. He will have portals of heaven open for him. He will smell the fragrances of heaven. He's gonna smell it, and he's gonna see the sights of heaven. And for him is peace, and the angel will say, this is your destination. And the believer will say, oh Allah, bring the day of judgment quickly. Bring it quickly so I can go to heaven. I wanna to go to this place that you have made for me. And the disbeliever is gonna say, oh Allah, never bring that day. Never bring that day that I'm gonna be judged on this day. Never bring that day. And some scholars say that uh, some of the believers, once they are shown this and once they, have, uh, once they see peace, uh, they will either enter some type of trance or a eternal peace in which their mind is not really working. They're just at peace, they're at, they're at peace. Now after all this, these, these souls will remain in the grave until the day of judgment, until the second, the second horn that's gonna be blown, the second trumpet. We talked about that in, in the day of judgment. So then they're gonna be resurrected. As we talked about the day of judgment, the whole proceedings are gonna go on. And now the final destinations have come. Where are we going to enter? As the people are going to be walking over the, the bridge, the Sarat, they're going to walk, be walking over and chains are going to come down for the non-believers and the inhabitants of hell. They're going to come down and rip them and pull them down into the depths of hell. And what is hell? Hell is, is a place where the most wretched things that you can imagine are there. When you enter it, the most putrid, disgusting of smells that you can smell. The smells of rotting flesh, the smells of burning flesh, the smells of excrement, anything disgusting that you can imagine, it will envelop, it will envelop their nostrils, it will fill them. It will fill them with this. And the sights of hell, the things that they will see, the Prophet ﷺ used to cry. He was shown hell because he was the messenger of Allah. Allah showed him hell and he used to cry thinking about hell. Because he knew he wasn't going to go. He knew his righteous believers weren't, weren't going to go. But he still cried at the sights of hell. And when sometimes his companions used to laugh too much, he said, if you, knew what I, if you knew what I knew, and if you saw what I saw, you would cry more and laugh less. And what about the, the, the screams of hell, the screams of the inhabitants? They will be wailing and crying and asking, asking for forgiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they will ask Allah, oh, put us back. Take us back to the world so that we can do good now. Take us back now. Take us back now. And Allah said, no. Did you not have clear signs? I gave you clear signs. I gave you clear signs. Come back. You, you, you think I'm going to bring you back? The evidence was clear to you and you did not follow. You did not follow my messengers that I sent to you. Allah. And what about the ugly tastes? Even the, the food and drink, the inhabitants are going to be begging for food and water. And they're going to be give, given food that will destroy their insides. And the water, they'll be drinking boiling water. Boiling water, boiling molten water. And Allah will, be keep, on, will keep on regenerating their bodies over and over and over. There is no death. There is no death in hell. Just pain and bringing them back over and over and over again. And what is the scariest thing about hell? The people who will be in hell permanently, Allah will abandon them. Allah will say, I will never hear you again. And I will never, never answer your prayers again. Nauzubillah. May Allah save us from this wretched, wretched fate. Amen. And 
the inhabitants of hell will look to heaven and Allah will show them heaven. They'll show, he'll show them heaven and they will see their place in heaven. Each and every one of us has two houses, one in heaven and one in hell. We're going to be shown these and they're going to see what could have been. If they had followed the right path, they would, they'll, they'll be shown that just to make them regret even more how they used to live on this, on this earth. And they will call upon the inhabitants of heaven and they will say, O oh, inhabitants of heaven, has Allah delivered his promise to you? What he promised to you, did he give it to you? They, they will say yes. And then the believers of heaven are going to say to the, to, the, to the disbelievers in hell, did you get what you were promised? And they will say yes. We got what we were promised. We got, we got it. And we seek Allah's refuge from this fate. On the other side, now we have the wretchedness of hell. Let's look at the beauty of heaven. Let's, let's look at hope. We have, to ha we have to have fear of Allah and we have to have hope. So let's look at hope. Well, what is heaven described like? The beautiful gates of heaven will be open. A thing that we cannot even imagine. The pearls dripping from it, made of diamond and gold and every beautiful thing that you can imagine. The gates are just made of it. The gates are open for the believers and the believer takes a step inside heaven. And the first step, he forgets every pain that he ever went through. He forgets every, every moment of depression, every moment of sadness and anger and jealousy and greed. And just that one step will be satisfying for him. And when he takes that step, what will he see? He will see gardens of paradise, rivers that no mind can even imagine, rivers the size of oceans, pure as white, pure, pure as milk, and their banks are going to be like pearls, and it's going to seem like gems are flowing out of these rivers, the purest of taste and the purest of smells from these rivers. And when they see across the horizon, they might think that there might be mountains, but those mountains are actually the palaces of the believers. The palaces of the believers will be rising up into the skies of heaven as, as mountains, as mountains. And they will see creatures that no eye can even comprehend right now. We cannot even imagine these creatures, these beautiful creatures. And the, the sounds of happiness and the sounds of laughter and the sounds of joy that they're going to hear. And as they enter, as they enter, they will eat the, the fruits of heaven and the meat of heaven and drinks that we cannot even imagine that every time you drink is going to be a different taste and it's going to taste even better. And you won't even have to eat for sustenance. You can eat for your pleasure. It's, it's, it's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we cannot even imagine. And what do we long? What do we long for? So many men long for this. Women, the most beautiful, some of the most beautiful of creation, the women of heaven, the hoors that we call, they are present in heaven and they are there for the believers. And who, who are these creations? These creations are meant specifically for those specific believers, made for those believers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it so that those women, they only look at their husbands. And who can describe these women? Imagine the most beautiful, perfect woman that you have ever seen in your life. Perfect in every way, beautiful in every way. And the hoods of heaven will be even more beautiful than that. Even more beautiful. And the lowest, the lowest person in heaven, the lowest person in heaven will get two. He'll get two hoods. And, and this is the person that's actually going to be brought out of hell. By the mercy of Allah, this is a person that's going to go to hell first. Once he's taken out, he will crawl back out, out, out of the gates of hell and Allah will say to him, Oh my slave, did you not do this wrong? Did you not do this wrong? And he will say, yes, I did. I did this. I used to do this and I used to do this and I used to do this. But I hope for your mercy. And Allah will say, come, come, enter, enter. He will bathe himself in the waters outside of the gates of heaven and he will enter heaven and he will give, be given a palace like no mind can even imagine. And he will be given two of the most beautiful wives that he can even think. And this is the lowest person in heaven. He will think that he has the best reward in all of heaven. He's going to think that nobody has been rewarded like him. Nobody has been rewarded like him. And what else are we going to have there? We're going to be able to meet our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the prophets of the past, the best of men, the Prophet Isa Alayhi Salam, Jesus, 
We're going to be able to meet Moses there, Musa alayhi salam, Noah, Nuh, all these righteous men that were slaves of Allah on earth and they, they followed the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will be present there and we will be able to be in their company. We will be in their company of the best of humans to ever live on this earth. And now, what is the greatest pleasure? What is the greatest pleasure? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call upon the inhabitants of heaven and he will say, come, I call you my slaves, come. And every single slave in heaven will call, will answer the call. They will walk into this valley and everybody is going to be arranged based on their rank. And Allah is going to say to the people, are you satisfied? Are you satisfied with this? They say, oh yes Allah, we are satisfied. We love what you have given us and you have provided us with your mercy. You have provided us with your rewards. But show us, show us your face. We long to see you. We long to see you. We want to meet you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal his face to the believers. We will be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the greatest mercy and the greatest gift that any creation can have to look upon our Lord knowing that He is satisfied with us. Knowing that He is satisfied with us. The people of heaven will say, Oh Allah, are you satisfied with us? He will say, Of course I am satisfied with you. If I was not satisfied with you, you wouldn't be in heaven right now. Of course I'm satisfied with you. This, this is our purpose. This is what we want to reach to. Nothing else matters. Nothing else in this life matters. Only thing matters is to follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to follow the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to enjoin good and to forbid evil and to strive to be the best human beings that we can be to reach that level that our Lord and our Creator the heaven, the Lord of the heavens and the earth He is satisfied with us this is our goal in life so my brothers don't, don't be deluded by this life the pleasures of this life they are nothing they are nothing this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the, in the Quran the true believers they want the hereafter this, this life is just a means to an end. This is the method of reaching the, the hereafter. The true believers are not obsessed with this world. They are not obsessed with the luxuries of this world. The true believer wants the hereafter. And we want the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we fear his punishment. So my brothers, my brothers, let's, let's put our faces on the ground five times a day. Let's remember our Lord. Let's recite the words that he revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let's enjoy good and let's forbid evil. And let's create a community in which we can help each other, guide each other. And inshallah, one day we can all enter into that blessed, blessed abode together inshallah. inshallah. All praise and glory is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the universe, the Lord of the world, the master and creator of the universe. May his peace and blessing be in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of creation, our leader, our prophet, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah to forgive us, to guide us, to put us upon the straight path, to save us from the punishment of the grave, the punishment of the day of judgment and the punishment of the hellfire. And we ask him to enter us into that blessed, blessed abode. Amen. Amen. Amen.